We are in conversation with Didier Drogba, and we are honored to have with us the daughter of Aliko Dangote, representing the Aliko Dangote Foundation, Halima. It's an honor to have you both here today. We've been attending the Africa Business Health Forum and discussing the importance of investment partnerships in health in Africa. I want to get started with a focus on giving back, philanthropy, the African reality. And I think, Halima, let me begin with you. It's a fascinating thing that your father, Aliko, actually began his work in philanthropy before he was the big Dangote we know today. Tell us a little bit about that. What inspired his journey? Well, I mean, I would say, non-officially. He started in 1993 um, and he registered his uh, foundation in 1994. But he goes way back. I mean, both my dad and myself, we all grew up with my grandmother. So his mother is like the root, root of philanthropy, like core. The matriarch. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I grew up uh, being woken up at 12 a.m. Uh, to just go to the hospital with her. We go and see the sick. You have to give them something, listen to what's, you know, just having a conversation. Her own idea is you have to live the person's life, even if it is for 10 minutes. Understand it. If we have issues with IDPs, we have to go there. It's not enough to just give back. You have to be there, you have to sit down, have the conversation, then assist. So it be together in spirit. In a yes. sense, it is what some communities in Africa call Ubuntu. Yes, yeah. The I am because you are. Yes. I I'm going to come back to more on that, but Didi, I want to tap into your journey. And what's really remarkable, and many people will know you as the football player, but looking at your career, even very early on, you stretched yourself and you stood up. So when Cote d'Ivoire was facing crisis, you stood up and said, you know, disarm, you know, cease fire, we can't do this. Um, when you saw challenges in health, you then set up a foundation. So why do you step up? Why do you stretch and why so young? Why was this important to you? It is important to me because first of all, uh, I love my country. I love my continent and uh, also the biggest fans that I have are from Africa, yeah. <laughs> you know. So when you see all these kids dreaming of becoming the next DJ Drogba or the next Samuel Eto or the next superstar, um, they, I've, I've seen a, a young girl here. I was coming to do the interview and she was in tears, you know. It, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. So I put myself like Alima said, you know, you cannot forget them. You have to, to live their life to understand. I, I've got kids and, and when I go to an hospital, when I see kids who are not in a good health, I, I say to myself, this could be my kids, and I don't want them to, to, to live in, in this kind of, of pain or situation. So automatically, I think it's, it's natural, it, come, it comes naturally. So I want to speak to the fact that, you know, many people believe you have to be successful to start doing things. And, and, you know, for you, your grandmother was, was like so many of our grandparents in the villages, just inspiring and changing things. For you, you saw a need and you said, we need to just act, right? What messages of inspiration do you have for other Africans? How can we better build African philanthropy to truly transform the realities on our continent, Halima? Oh, if you ask me, everyone, everyone has a role. Everyone has a role. It doesn't matter what you have. All you have to look at is you can either give back with money, you can give back with, uh, with support, prayer, being there physically, spiritually, or helping with money. Whatever it is, you do have to give back. They didn't choose to be born like that. 
I knew also didn't choose to be born in, you know, I would say in a situation where you'll be able to have good access to health care. So you have to be there for one reason at least, humanity. Wow, humanity. What would you say? And, and in particular to a lot of young people who very often on the continent feel a sense of hopelessness and, and victimhood and maybe don't feel they can, you know, they don't feel they can give much. But what would you say? What would you say to Africa? I think um, there's always hope. They have to dream. And that's the dream that helped me to become the, the person I am today. And you know, there's always, always possibilities to achieve something. And um, I think it has to come from, from ourselves. And we as six kind of successful uh, people, we have to inspire this, this, these generations, you know, and, and that's what we're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. And, and by attending this kind of forum and learn a lot, to go back there and then and then try to to show that uh, this was a successful meeting, and um, I'm not going to stop until I see a younger person being doing the same thing and being successful even more than, than I am. You know that's the goal. And it's inspiring because you, Didier, were born in a Red Cross hospital. I remember you saying that. And so your reality has been a journey in itself. So as you sit here and hear the conversations around the importance of healthcare, the partnerships being set up, what are you thinking? What's top of mind? And why is health in Africa important for you? I wish I could do it on my own and just with a clap, change everything and make sure everybody's in, in, in good health. You know, just health is is very, very important. I mean, when you wake up, you call your mom or your mom calls you, how are you, my son? How are you today? She's asking me about your health. You know, and that's what we've been doing every day in our lives. So it's the most important thing. And really, uh, I've been doing uh, quite a lot in, in my country, but also across Africa. In, and uh, it's not easy. But partnering with, with some other uh, organizations can help. I mean, we have to come together. We really have to come together to, to have a, a real impact and, and change the philosophy and the perceptions of Africa. Right. We have to come together. Partnerships are important. Halima, you know, the truth is, and maybe there are people who don't know this, but the Aliko Dangote Foundation was really instrumental in, in helping Africa deal with the Ebola crisis. It could have been much worse. Um, and, and in so many other ways, when it comes to malnutrition, it's on the ground doing its work. I want you to take us through the importance of the work you do in health and, 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 and in food and in nutrition. Nutrition. And tell us about ABC Health, which is something new that's that's starting now. Yeah. I mean, if I look at it, for example, doing just doing what we grew up like learning from our uh, well, my dad's mom, who is my grandmother. We tend to go to IDP camps ourselves, and that's when you see the reality of things. That's when you see thousands of orphans. That's where you see a mother with a child. I'll give you an example of a child that we saw. I was absolutely sure that the child had issues with maybe getting burnt or something. I actually had no idea that it was acute malnutrition. And that's why we had to just go back to the drawing board. Yes, we're doing polio eradication. Yes, we're looking at health. But what about the first 1,000 days of that child? How do you make sure the child is not stunted? The best way to do it is to start from the root cause, which is nutrition. Most of the mothers don't even have any idea that their kids are malnourished. So you have to start from the mother. You have to teach her that your child needs more. Some of them you have to go th uh, through treatment. 
but you can actually not do that without the mother understanding that this child is malnourished. We see a lot of those cases, uh, you know, in those um, IDP camps. And that's why we keep going back, because when you go back, you see the result, you see the improvement. But unfortunately, it's not enough. Unfortunately, it's not enough. And that's where ABC Health is coming in. I mean, you can see where I have just one example I can show you with polio eradication that we've worked with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We partnered with the government. Yes, a lot of pains and gains, but I mean, we scaled through. And you can actually see that when you form a coalition, how far you go. And that is what is keeping us, you know, just keep pushing, keep pushing. So I mean, uh, my, I very much believe ABC Health is very, very important. Critical on the way forward. Also, very quickly, the Africa Center, African narratives and African storytelling. This is work you are doing as well. Take us through that. Well, um, I'm the president of Africa Center in New York. So what we're trying to do is really change the narrative of Africa. Our stories have been told by others. Our identities have been defined with little appreciation of our true selves. They've been defined by others. So we want to show you the true Africa. I mean, it's the next, is what to me is the biggest continent that even when it comes to investment, whatever it is, we are growing and the opportunities are endless. I just believe that Africa, when you see it, the sky is your starting point, to be honest. So that's what we're trying to do with Africa Center. Right, and it's about making Africans truly see and understand the possibilities. Exactly. Didi, I'm going to give you the final word, but I'll tell you both a little story. In 2010, the Horn of Africa went through an incredible drought, and many were facing starvation right from Somalia into Kenya. And I remember I was on TV and we went on TV and just begged Kenyans to support and do what they could. And we raised in one month 10 million US dollars from ordinary people sending money. And the reason why I tell that story is you've referenced the importance of being the light that sometimes when you have the status and you have this, you then have the responsibility. So Didier, if we can inspire Africans to once again embody that kind of spirit and all come together, let's do it. Please look into the camera and say something to Africans about how we can rally together and be community supporting each other and solving our problems. Over to you. <laughs> What a responsibility. <laughs> no, I, I really think and um, we are in a position where we can see the continent is changing and uh, the perception of the continent has changed, you know, and we have excellence like people in different um, worlds. Uh, being leaders, we have a lot of leaders like Alima, her father, uh, in sports. We have a lot of athletes being famous and who are coming back, who are being successful abroad or even in, uh, in the continent, but bringing their experience, their, their talent, and their desire to improve the continent in Africa. And yes, we have a voice. Yes, we are kind of representing you, but without you, we are nothing. So I think only together we can, we can achieve something. Only together we can change, like she said, the narrative of Africa. And we want people to talk about Africa as the excellence. Thank you for your support, thank you for your help. Thank you. Without you, we are nothing. It's amazing. And together, we can be the transformation. We have a couple of questions. Do you want to come and just come uh, forward? OK. Yeah. OK, merci. Uh, I, I will speak in French, because I work for French TV. <laughs> merci, Didier. Uh, ma question, c'est que, quelle est la raison principale que vous êtes ici, uh, dans ce forum? Et la prochaine, c'est que, Pourquoi le, la santé en Afrique est tellement importante euh, pour vous Si vous avez des raisons personnelles, pourquoi la santé 
en général. En, en français ou en anglais En français. En français, en français s'il vous plaît. Oui. Um, sorry, I have to do it in French. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, je suis ici parce que c'est un forum sur la santé et que c'est quelque chose qui me touche de, de, de très près. Uh, J'ai eu l'occasion à plusieurs reprises d'être confronté à... à à des soucis euh, dont j'ai une petite histoire, un jeune de, de 9 ans, un jeune Ivoirien de 9 ans qui était euh, atteint d'une leucémie, euh, était à l'hôpital en Côte d'Ivoire, donc après un match international, je suis allé lui rendre visite et je me suis retrouvé dans une salle à l'hôpital de 12 ou 15 mètres carrés maximum, il y avait 9 mères et 9 enfants qui étaient à même le sol, sur des nattes à même le sol et tous ces enfants étaient atteints de leucémie. Et, et donc j'étais en train de, de, de faire des démarches administratives pour envoyer un de ses enfants en Suisse pour qu'il suive un traitement. Et lorsque je me suis rendu au chevet de, de, de l'enfant, les autres mamans m'ont dit « Mon fils, ne m'oublie pas, ne me laisse pas ». Et ça, ça m'a touché parce que je me suis rendu compte que je ne pouvais pas sauver tout le monde et je, je, je me sentais vraiment impuissant. Donc c'est pour ça que participer à ce genre de forum, pour moi c'est très important pour me donner pour rencontrer des personnes euh, qui vont m'accompagner euh, sur ce genre de, de projet et, et surtout développer la, la fondation pour pouvoir avoir un impact euh, plus important. Voilà. Parce que la finalité de l'histoire, c'est que euh, les conditions étaient, étaient désastreuses. Donc, euh, des neufs, je pense qu'il n'y en a aucun qui a survécu. Donc, euh, c'est un de mes combats et, et je compte le mener jusqu'au jusqu bout. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Euh, merci. Toujours en français. J'ai deux questions. La première question, je voulais savoir si euh, c'est euh, votre première visite en Éthiopie et comment vous l'avez trouvé. Deuxième question, euh, après avoir annoncé votre retraite, euh, quels sont vos engagements à part euh, football, éducation, santé. Donc je voulais savoir votre engagement. Merci. Alors c'est effectivement c'est la première fois en, en Éthiopie et euh, je suis vraiment euh, séduit par l'accueil. C'est vrai qu'il y a beaucoup de fans de football ici. <rire> J'ai pu m'en rendre compte. Et euh, oui, depuis l'annonce de ma retraite. Euh, J'essaie je de me focaliser vraiment sur, sur ma fondation parce que c'est euh, étant en pleine activité, je n'avais pas l'occasion d'être là au quotidien. Donc là, c'est vraiment mon objectif. C'est aussi pour ça que je suis ici aujourd'hui. Euh, L'éducation, euh, il y a à peine une dizaine de jours, on a, on a équipé une école numérique, euh, une école en, en Côte d'Ivoire euh, avec... Euh, euh, le numérique, les, 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 les inciter à, à aller vers le digital parce que c'est l'avenir et c'est maintenant. Donc on pousse les élèves à l'excellence euh, en leur donnant les, les, les outils pour pouvoir travailler et puis s'épanouir. Euh, la santé, bien sûr, comme je l'expliquais tout à l'heure, c'est exactement ça et c'est le but de, de ma présence aujourd'hui. One more, thank you. Hi, thank you. My name is Coletta. Uh, Mr. Didier, um, kindly highlight to us the kind of projects you're doing, some details, so that we can know where you're investing, especially in the health issues. Then secondly, uh, football cannot be um, put aside from you. People look at you and they see football. <laughs> yes. So do you have any projects, probably football-related, that you think you can use in order to influence other projects, especially on health? Thank you. Thank you. Um, So the first question was to, to speak about what I'm doing with my foundation. Uh, I built a clinic uh, in Abidjan, and uh, the goal was to give access to, to healthcare to everyone. So the clinic being in Abidjan is not enough. So I had to think about how can I reach those people. So we thought about the mobile clinic, and uh, so we go to different part of the country and we stayed uh, a week, a month and we screened people and the last campaign we did was about um, uh, heart disease and we screened uh, in two weeks uh, more than a bit more than 3,000 people and it's, inter it's very interesting because most of them 
they don't even know if they're in good health or not. So when you give them the result, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know I have had uh, hypertension. Is that, yeah? Yeah. I didn't know about that. So thank you. You know, just the thank you is pushing you to do, to do more. And, and that's why I'm here today. So that's the answer of your question. I don't know if there is. I don't know. Second, second question was about football. Second question was about football. Football, yes. Yeah. Well, I think football can can be related to either education uh, or healthcare. Um, and if you want to 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 stay in, into healthcare, um, almost two years ago now, uh, one of my ex teammates in the national team died of of heart attack. Sheikh Tiote. And uh, because he didn't do the medical. So this is really important to me. So uh, I'm co-owner of a football team in the US. And uh, we are professional. But when the players were doing, uh, were signing, we were not doing the, the, the ECG. So I told them, I said, listen, we have to do it before something bad happens. And this is just for the players you know, for their health and to protect also the club. But this is something really important. We have to do it. And a few months later, this situation happened with my my uh, brother in, in China. So this is something that can be related to, to, to football or, and has to be related to football, yes. Because to play and to perform, you have to be in a good health. Thank you. I should also say you can um, look at the Foundation website. You'll get information there. There's a school, I think, that you set up and launched as well. And I guess there are huge connections between education and football. Maybe the appeal on behalf of Africa that I will give to you is how can you maybe get more involved, especially um, at schooling level or even advising our governments on how to ensure that football and, and exercise and sports is a big part of the agenda. That might be something interesting. So we are finished. We are done. But I want you to leave us inspired. Through the work that you are doing in your foundations, what's the Africa that you believe we could have? I'll start with you, Halima, and then Didier. <laughs> I mean, we always, myself, Zwaya, and the board members, I have some of my board members here. Um, Self-sufficiency is very, very key. Once you have, if you look at whether workforce or population, you have healthy, if you have a healthier population, more productivity. You have healthier workforce, more profitability, uh, more productivity and profitability, to be honest. But one thing that you have to really, really look at is, once you look at putting money in health as a cost, you failed. You have to look at it as an investment. And if you don't invest today, you're going to pay heavily. So I mean, it's time. We must invest in what you see is a healthy Africa. Healthy Africa. Thank you so much, Didier. I don't think there's more to add to this, <laughs> really. That's exactly what we want. Yeah. A healthy Africa. Thank you very, very much for your time. Let's give them a round of applause for those who are here. And thank you to the teams, the media teams who are with us as well. Thank you very much.